Hi everybody, today I am going to do a quick tutorial on how to stack and calibrate your frames in AstroPixel Processor. First things first, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I've seen people say that they run out of memory when using APP. I'm not quite sure what memory that is. But if it's RAM we're talking about, you can actually tell APP how much RAM you want it to be able to use, but it's set to 6. Or if it's hard disk space, it tells you how much free space you've got here. And as you start loading in data and calibrating, it will tell you how much free space you need on your hard drive to actually stack the data somewhere up here. So now that's out of the way, first you'll notice each tab is helpfully numbered uh, 0 to 9, missing out 7 and 8 I'm not quite sure what happened to 7 and 8 I've never asked the developer bit interesting though but we'll start on tab 0 if you've got a DSLR camera you can leave this as it is like this, unticked um, and supported if you have an Astro camera this is where you need to tell it to debayer and what order that your um, colour filter array is. So I use an Auto Astro Hogcam 183C. In APP, you need to use RGGB. How do I know that we need to use RGGB? Um, last year, when I first had the trial, there was a lot of confusion um, for myself and some of the well known Astro images about which setting I should be using. I ended up getting in contact with the developer of APP and sending him a data set of mine and in the end we came to the conclusion it should be RGGB in this program. I'm going to leave it as adaptive air disk and you know what I like about APP is when you mouse over things you get helpful um, boxes with you know explaining what everything is. Um, adaptive air disk is a proprietary algorithm. Um, and I think it's very, very good. I'm just going to tick Force Bayer CFA. So I've already selected my working directory, which is under APP tutorial. Let's cancel. And I'm going to load in some light frames. all 52 lights have been added in there and then I'm going to use a master flat and a master dark and a bad pixel map these are ones I made earlier um, but it, just for the purpose of this video it makes them a little bit quicker so we've got a master flat there a master dark and a bad pixel map And then I'm going to go to tab number two, to the calibrate um, tab, and I'm going to leave everything as is, apart from if you're using an Astrocam, um, which s suffers with severe amp glow or electroluminescence at the side, then you want to take this adaptive pedestal slash reduce amp glow. Also, if you want to, I've already done mine, but you can create a bad pixel map during this stage. And then I'm just going to reassign masters to lights. If you were create if you were loading each dark in separately and each flat in separately, this at this point you would select create masters and assign to lights instead. And now if we look at the bottom, we've got each white frame has got a master dark master flat and a bad pixel map attached to it. So next we're going to go to tab 3, leave everything in as is and click analyze stars. This stage does take a little bit of time so while that's doing that I'm going to press pause and I'll come back to you once they're analyzed. 
So, apologies if you can hear the fan on my computer. This is quite an intensive process apparently. You can see that we're using quite a lot of that. But once it's finished, it should be any minute now, we can move on to tab number four, which is the, re the register. Those bongs, uh, well, ding dong, whatever, are just to draw your attention to the fact that that stage is finished. So if you've gone off to make a cup of coffee or whatever, you know that it's done and you can come back and carry on. So in this tab, you can actually set a reference frame if you like, or you can just let it do itself, which I tend to do. So you just click start registration yeah. takes a little bit of time you just let it run and um, when it's done you should have all the frames registered and it will tell you which one is the reference frame take too long and now we can go to the normalize tab um, are you always tick neutralize background this can get rid of some nebulosity so when we get to tab 9 at the end it's important to um, calibrate the background again but that will be on my next video so just quickly before I press normalize we can see what data we've got here we've got the stars and star density um, we've got quality Score and if I scroll down, we should be able to find the reference frame in there. There, and that's the one with the highest score. So that's light number 50. So if we click normalize lights. Now this does take a little bit of time, so once again I'm going to pause and I'll come back once it's done. So now that the um, lights have all been normalised, we can actually go to integrate. So we're nearly there with you know getting a stacked image. So if you look under the integrate tab, there's a quite a few different options. So I have taken to stacking all of my frames and I weight it for quality. There's different options here um, and if you hold the mouse over long enough it does explain what they all are. But quality it basically gives you the best result for sort of sharpness and noise levels and you can choose whether to do an average integration or a median integration. I, I just stick with average at the moment. Um, but what I do do is I do outlier rejection and that's to get rid of satellite trails etc. Um, once again if you sort of hold over it does explain which one you know that you might want to use. I use uh, tend to use an LN MAD signal clip. Apologies if you can hear any strange noises. I've had to go and pick my dog up from the groomers so she's back and it's around our feet and we can also go for uh, when it says mode you can either center all your stack on the reference frame or just full is normal the normal sort of option but I tend to s sort of stack on the reference frame and then we can click integrate and it will start integrating all the frames this also takes quite a bit of time, so um, I'm going to click pause, and then when we're done, I'll uh, load in the image and what you get at the end.
So once it's all finished, what you get if you scroll to the bottom of your file list, so scroll back up to the top just to show you, you'll get an integration one. So you double click it and it will bring up the integration. As soon as you load it in, you'll get an idea of how you've done because it automatically stretches. That's this tab, this checkbox here is all automatically ticked. Um, and you can see there, there's quite, you know, some decent data in there, even though it's only sort of 52 minutes. Um, but you can also see there's quite a bit of glow here. And you can just sort of see the edges where, you know, the different files have been stacked. So, I'm going to leave that video here for now. Um, my next video, I'll go over sort of basic image processing in Astro Pixel Processor on this image. Um, I hope that's been helpful. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, see you soon.